Welcome back to Zone for Geeks. In our last video, we installed a network monitoring tool called Zabbix. In this video, we're going to be creating a web monitor and then also a custom trigger to alert us if there's a problem. Now, before we get started, I want to update my dashboard really fast to make it a little bit easier to see when we uh, trigger that. So I'm going to just set this for 10 seconds. Uh, host is going to be on our Zabbix server, so I'm just going to leave that. And then let's go ahead and save it and let's create our web collector. So we're going to go into data collections and our host. We only have the one that's our Zabbix server. So we're going to click on web and then we're going to click on create web scenario. We're going to give it a name. So uh, we're just going to track google.com. You can do obviously your own website. So we'll give it a name of google.com. Uh, we want to do this every 30 seconds. And next thing we're going to click on steps up here. We're going to click on add. Once again, give it a name. And this is going to be our URL. So www.google.com. And we're going to leave everything else as defaults. So click add. Click add again. And now that's all we need to do to set up our webhook. Now what's going to happen is that our Zabbix server is going to send a request out to google.com and look and see what the response code is. Normally that response code is going to be 200. That's usually indicative of a website that isn't healthy. Um, but if you get something like a 404 or 501 or 503, then that could be a problem. And you want to know about that before your users start alerting you that there's a problem. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at that real fast. So we're going to go into monitoring and then latest data. And I only have just a Zabbix server, so uh, if you have more than one, you'll need to select your uh, Zabbix server. And then we're going to scroll down here. It's going to be on page two. And if we see right here our response code for stepgoogle.com, and the code that is returned is 200. That is what we expect. Uh, we can also see our latency, so 92.76 ms. So now what I want to do is I want to set up a trigger that will alert us if the response code is not 200. Now you can set up a trigger if for a specific response code if you want, but in my case, I just want to know if I'm not getting back a response code of 200. That could mean any problem that I need to actually address. So we're gonna come over back to our data collections. We're gonna go into our host. We're gonna choose our Zabbix server and our triggers. Now I'm going to create a trigger and we're going to give this a name, so google.com status. And then set a severity. Now, because this is a website that we highly uh, depend on, I'm gonna set this as high. If you're maybe a, a e-commerce site, you might actually wanna set this as disaster because if your users can't get to the website, then you can't make any money. So we're going to make a custom expression here. So I'm going to click on add. And then we're going to select the trigger that is available to us. In this case, we're just going to scroll down until we see the response code for google.com. So I'm going to click on that. The last of T count, that means how many times does this have to fail before triggers? So we have our um, trigger set up to go off every 30 seconds, I believe. So I'm going to set this for two. So if for 60 seconds, the value is not 200, then I want to get an alert. All right, and then down here, it's going to be our condition. So in this case, if you wanted to say only maybe a 404 error, you could leave it just like that, and that would be fine. In this case, we want to say that it, if it is not equal to 200. So we're going to use this less than, greater than symbol here, and put in 200. So what's happening here is we're checking the status code of our google.com. We are going to check twice, and if both times it comes back a response of not 200, it's going to trigger our alert. So I'm going to hit insert. And then now I also want to generate a recovery expression. So this means that when our response is 200, so it, let's say for example, it goes to 404, it triggers an alert, but then we fix the problem and it goes back to a 200 uh, response code. I want to get notified that everything is okay. So I'm gonna hit recovery expression, click on add. And basically we're just gonna do the same thing we did for our first expression click on the uh, response code 
This time I'm only going to do one because if it's right the first time, then that's all that I care about. It's going to reset that count. So it will have to be wrong two more times in order to trigger another alert. Uh, we're going to say equal and my response code should always be 200. So we're going to hit insert and add. And that's it. We have now created our custom trigger. Now, of course, we could wait until um, Google stopped responding and we would get an alert. But that's not obviously feasible. It could take years or even longer. So let's go ahead and test it by putting in a website or a URL that we know is not good. So let's come back over here to our hosts. We're going to check our web. We're going to google.com and our steps. And here are URL, so we know google.com is good. So I'm just going to put in some random characters. And so this should return a 404 error uh, because that URL does not actually exist. So I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to hit Update. Now this, uh, this checks every 30 seconds and of course it has to fail twice. So it will take up to a minute for you to actually get that alert. So as soon as I get that alert, I will be back. There you have it. We now have a triggered alert that the google.com status is not what we expected. So if I click here and I go to problems, I can go into more detail. Um, I can go into the Zavix server. Let's see. Uh, I can check the history. I can also check the trigger to see what exactly um, caused this error. In this case, we know that it is our response code. And uh, it will continue this state until it reaches a 200 code response code. So now let's go ahead and change it back to google.com and we should see this error clear up. So we're going to go back into our host, go back into our web, google.com, steps, and then we're just going to take this last part out. And once again, after 60 seconds, we should see this will actually disappear, but we will go into our history and see that it shows resolved. So as soon as this gets done, I'll be back. Okay, so now you can see that our status is showing resolved. Google.com is coming back with a 200 and our alert has been reset. That's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment if you have any comments or questions. And I'll catch you on the next one.